Hey, how's everyone doing? Um, so we're back with another video. Um, today we're going to look at the corollaries of the isosceles triangle theorem or the base angles theorem. Um, and then we'll also do a few problems um, applying uh, the isosceles triangles theorem, the base angles theorem, and all of its corollaries. So what I'm going to do here, not going to do any formal proofs for you. We're just going to kind of walk through and discuss why each of these corollaries work the way that they do. Um, introduce you to the converse of the triangles, excuse me, isosceles triangle theorem, um, and then, like I said, go through a few examples. So let's go ahead and get started. The first corollary reads, an equilateral triangle is also equiangular. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to mark two of the sides congruent. So immediately what this tells us is that the, the angles opposite those sides also have to be congruent. So these angles would be congruent to each other. Now, since this is an equilateral triangle, I'm going to mark the third side congruent. And what that means now is that this side has to be congruent with these other two angles as well. If you take them as a pair, okay, like this, okay, these base angles would be congruent. You take them like this, these base angles would be congruent. And then the third way was the original way that we started. Okay, so an equilateral triangle is always going to be equiangular. So that means that if all the sides are congruent, all the interior angles are going to be congruent as well. Corollary number two, an equilateral triangle has three 60 degree angles. So what we just found here is that if a triangle is equilateral, it's also equiangular. So that means that the measure of each of those interior angles is the same. We know that the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a triangle is 180. So if we divide that by three, we get 60 degrees. So that's why the sum, excuse me, the measure of each interior angle of an equilateral triangle is 60 degrees. Corollary number three, the bisector of the vertex angle of an isosceles triangle is perpendicular to the base at its midpoint. So let's talk about that one a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw in the bisector of the vertex angle. So I'm gonna call A the vertex angle. So those two sides are gonna be the same. Now, what we also know is because this is an isosceles triangle, I'm gonna let these two sides be the legs. We also know that the base angles are going to be congruent. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna label the rest of the points, important points here. So now what we see, sorry about that, is that we have two congruent triangles here, triangle A, B, D has to be congruent to triangle A, C, D, and that's because of angle, side, angle. All right, so a couple different things now. Since we know that these two triangles are congruent, we know that angle A, D, B, and angle A, C have to be congruent. Now, if those two angles are congruent and adjacent, they have to be right angles because they're going to add up to 180 because they're a linear pair. And if they're, again, congruent, they have to be 90 degrees each. So those are the right angles that they're talking about, so perpendicular to the base. And then at its midpoint, because triangle ABD is congruent to triangle ACD, that means that those two sides are congruent because of CPCTC which means D has to be in the midpoint of BC. Okay, I'm gonna erase this. And we're gonna scroll down. And now we're gonna look at the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem or the converse of the base angles theorem. So this reads, if two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite, those angles are also going to be congruent. So basically, I'm just going to draw a quick little triangle in here. If we know that these two angles are congruent, then the sides opposite, those angles have to be congruent as well. And to kind of follow that, we have a corollary to this theorem. An equi equi equiangular triangle is also equilateral. 
So again, here, these two sides would be congruent. Then if we go like this, that third side would also have to be congruent as well. All right, so here's just a brief introduction to the corollaries to the isosceles triangle theorem. What we're gonna do now is look at a couple of examples um, to help you get started on the practice. Erase this. And we're gonna to move to the next slide. Okay, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna work through these first four problems and then you guys are gonna finish the bottom part on your own. So let's go ahead and do this. So it says find the values of X and Y. So for the first one, the numerical value that I see right here is 115. And I know that the angle that's adjacent to that those two angles have to sum to 180 degrees. So um, 180 minus 115 would be 65 degrees. Now, since this is 65 degrees, and these are the face angles of an isosceles triangle, X would also have to be 65. Now, 65 and 65 equals 130. 180 minus 130 is going to give us y, which would be 50 degrees. So in this case, x equals 65 degrees, y equals 50 degrees. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So again, here, if we take a look, we have y minus 10 degrees is this angle up here. We have x plus five is this angle here. And what I'm noticing is that the triangle is equilateral. Now, if the triangle is equilateral, that means it's also equiangular. So all these angles have to be congruent. Now, since they're all congruent and the sum of the interior angle measures is 180, that means each of those angles is equal to 60. So we can set up two equations here. y minus 10 equals 60 and then x plus 5 equals 60. And these two equations are going to help us determine the values of x and y. So when we add 10 to both sides, we get y equals 70. Subtract 5 from both sides, we get x equals 55. So the solutions here would be y equals 70 and x equals 55. Number three, we're going to solve that really almost using the exact same technique as we did with problem two. All right, number three is an equilateral triangle, which means all the angles are the same. They're all 60 degrees. So again, 2x equals 60, and then 3y equals 60. Divide both sides by 2, then we get x equals 30. Divide both sides by 3, we get y equals 20. Let me go back and circle all of our final answers here. All right, let's take a look at the last one. So number four, again, we're solving for X and Y. So to find X, I think that one's pretty straightforward. Those two angles are a linear pair of angles, which means that they're supplementary. So if we take 110 and subtract that from 80, we get X equals 70 degrees. Now, if we look here, it looks like um, the segment that goes from the vertex angle is perpendicular to the base. Um, again, we, we could use that last corollary that we talked about, oh, the last corollary, one of the corollaries that we talked about on the previous page. But here, um, all we have to really recognize is that this triangle that's formed is a right triangle. And the acute angles of a right triangle are always gonna be complementary. They're always gonna add up to 90. So why? is gonna equal 20 degrees. So X equals 70, Y equals 20. All right, so what you folks are gonna do now is go ahead and finish up the remaining practice. You're gonna check your answers on the answer key that I posted to the weekly overview. Hope this video was helpful, and we'll see you in the next one.